was thinking about uh, some random things on the drive here, and one of the things was that um, the rate of fire on guns, you know, like 10 years ago, pick up a TM and 8.4 NIM battery in it, and you're, you're talking like eight rounds per second. That was a big thing. And I remember my first TM MP5, I put that 8.4 in there and I was like, this is phenomenal. Then I actually found a 9.6 and everybody's telling me, oh, you'll get better, better response from that. So I got a 9.6, put it in there, and all of a sudden I'm getting 10 rounds a second. And I'm like, holy crap, that's like phenomenal. And you could get all different kind of maws and it last longer, than, so the 9.6 was the way to go. But on a TM with a 9.6, I burnt the trigger contacts out. And that was my first forte into tearing apart a gun because the trigger contacts were bad and I didn't know any better. I bought a whole wire set and tried to put it in there instead of just replacing the trigger contacts and soldering the wires back on so I didn't have to tear everything apart and put new wires in and everything. But I didn't know any better, so that's what I did. But then I started seeing people were using lipos. And I had used lipos in my RC stuff, helicopters. Uh, but my end were normally uh, 14A, 22 volt batteries um, with a real high C rating, 45, 50, 60. So they, they have these seven fours, um, and I saw the different C ratings, and everybody's saying, oh, buy a 7420C. And I'm like, I don't know if that's enough to pull the gun. So I said, I'm gonna go with a 25. So I bought, I bought, I remember buying my first 7.4 25C LiPo batteries. Now I had bought transmitter batteries, which were small micro 7.4 uh, batteries, usually like 250 ma, 300 ma, 450 ma, uh, which EST ends on them. So now I'm buying 7.4 batteries with, um, you know, Tamiya ends on them and 25C. So I put that in the gun after I replaced trigger contacts right away, and wow, my TM, instead of shooting like 10 now, shoot like 12 rounds a second. 13, miles. Keep right. 14, 15, and I'm like, wow, that is awesome. So then I said, you know, I know they got bigger batteries than this, and I probably could find one that'll fit in the hand guard. In point five miles, keep right. So I went and got an 11.1 uh, battery for it, uh, and 25C also. And but in order to fit into the stock or in their handguard, I mean, I actually got uh, a 1,000 ma battery, and I thought that should last long because I was using like an 8, 1800 uh, otherwise. So I said, that should work good. Well, of course, I put the 11.1 in there and, you know, now I'm getting 16, 16, 17, even 18 sometimes. And on a Lark, I went and I bought an 11.1 35C battery. Well, I'm just, you know, I put it in there and I'm getting 16, 17, 18 now. The problem is, I fried the trigger contacts again. So I said, yeah, well, I can't use that high of a C rating. I'm pulling too much out of the battery, uh, trying to trigger contacts. I'll just, I'll go back and I'll, I'll use a 7.4 in that. That'll last a heck of a lot longer, 25C. And the 7.4 was 1300 ma, so it's, it lasted most of the day. I had two. Then I got another MP5, a little bit more beefier, and it had a full stock on the back. And I said, I have to try an 11.1, get a bit, and I found an 
5,000 mAh 25C battery that fit perfectly in the stock. It ran all day, shooting full auto, semi, you name it, it lasted all damn day. And I mean, an off, eight hours. Then, HPA happened. I was introduced to my first HPA gun. One of our guys on the team got one. And I was impressed. I had played paintball before and I thought, I didn't have my tanks or anything else left. And I said, geez, I really should check this out. And I got in contact with Rudy, the doggo at Bingo Airsoft. And I said, what do you suggest for Airsoft? I said, um, I'm going to be running. And I said, what we're going to start off with, I want to get my PPSH that I have turned into an HPA. And he said, yeah, I can do that. I said, now I got drum mags for this, and I'm going to run it like a support weapon. What do you recommend? And he recommended the 4590 tanks, the regulator, the hoses, the whole nine yards. He gave me a package deal putting the uh, Polar Star engine, full Polar Star engine, into the PPSH and set it all up. Now, the original uh, Ares PPSH shot at like 340 and about 20 rounds a second. And I said, well, that's good enough for me. So I told Rudy, I wanted 350 with two fives and whatever the default setting is for the Polar Star. So I get the gun back and I'm shooting on semi and 350 is phenomenal. It's just, and it has a tight bore barrel in it and it's just flying out there forever. And then I switched it to full auto, 25 rounds a second. And I mean, it's and I'm like, wow. I, I eventually set it back down to 20 because I thought that was way fast enough. But I did up it to uh, 365 with two fives so that I could go to fields that had a 400 with 2 -oh limit and I'd be under the limit and the people with 400 with two fives I'd be under that field limit as well so not a, not a problem no matter which field I went to I remember my one buddy telling me he said boy you should like crank the fire rate of fire up on there and I'm like why you go through BBs too fast so I decided that I wanted to get an MP5 gun Polar Star. So I said, Rudy, I got an old Echo One, and the gearbox is destroyed. You know, the gears and everything is destroyed. I'll take all the guts out. Just send you the gearbox and the selector with it and all that. And, excuse me. And I said, it's got a, a 605 Type 4 barrel in it. Or 604, I'm sorry, 604 Type 4 barrels what came with it. And I said, it's got a brand new bucking in the whole nine yards I put in there and a hop up. And it's a TM style hop up. So he put it in there and I got the thing back and he again had set it at 350, 25 rounds a second. So of course I already knew that I wanted to set it back down. So I sent it back down to 16 rounds a second. And I kept up and I set it up to 365 so it stays within the field limits of a 400 with 2.0 or 400 with 2.5. But I was noticing that I just was not getting the range with it. Of course, it's only a short 230 millimeter barrel. So I started talking with various people about getting a little bit more range out of it. And about how you adjust the dwell, adjust this, adjust that. And I actually got it pushing out air quite a bit, um, right to the edge of the barrel and then stop. 
I, I, I forget all the settings and that that I changed, but I remember that it was phenomenal. I had this little gun shooting out almost 200 feet. And I said, this is just astronomical. I like that you can do this with the Polar Star stuff. So I finally bought uh, an FN30 kit off a friend of mine, this Ian Beavis, they call him Mr. Minigun. At the time he was called Killbuck and he changed the name to Mr. Minigun because he's making miniguns on a regular basis. But anyway, I bought the FN30 off him and he had set it up to be able to just throw a P90 hop, a P90 uh, gearbox in it and, you know, put a box mag on it. He had the box mag, but it wasn't done. And he made one up for me so that I could just run the P90 and feed it into the top um, and it would work like a champ. So it had a ridiculous rate of fire, but it just did not feed fast enough out of the box mag. I think I had set like 25 also, and it just did not feed right. So I said to Rudy, would you want to try putting a Polar Star engine in this, a fusion engine into this? And he's like, oh yeah, sure, I'll do that. And he put a full engine in it. He built his own box mag for it with his own mechanism inside. And he set it up. And he said to me, what do you want this one to shoot? And I said, well, it's a combination like 1917, 1919, 30 caliber, FN30 caliber. I said, and the 1917 shot 600 rounds per, per uh, minute, and the 1919 shot, shot 16, 660, so that's 10 or 11. I said, let's go with 11 rounds per second. And I said, same thing. I said, 365 with two fives. I said, this way I'm under the field limit. Anywhere I go, uh, 400, 200, 400, 25. He set that up, sent that off to me, and that also was interesting because in the kit, I had put a 509 Type 4, 603 Type 4 barrel in it. And I remember I was shooting two eights at the time. And I was shooting two eights in all the Polar Star stuff, and like in the MP5, you know, you had lots of hop ups, so the two eights were fine, and you know, in the PBSH, the two eights were fine. I remember throwing the two eights in that 30 caliber and shooting it, and the BBs were just rising like up to the sky. And I said, Well, the hop up's on too much, so I turned the hop up I found was like almost off. And Rudy told me, he said, you got to run heavier weight BBs in that. So I started running 3.0s in it, and you could just barely tweak the hop-up, and the thing would sail out there. And I had a, a course marked out at 200 feet and 220 feet. And I remember shooting at the 200-foot mark. I mean, it's like not dropping straight as a string going out there. And I said, well, I'll shoot at the 220 mark. And that thing just went out there and hit it. I was very impressed. And 11 rounds a second at 365. I went to several games with it. And the big thing that I heard was, wow, man, that hurts when it gets hit. And I'm thinking, 30s at 365, 30s, you know, shoot 365 with two fives, you know, I, I don't understand what the problem is. So rather than hurt people, I decided that, okay, I'm going to shoot. Wow, that was good. Somebody jerked in front of me. Um, I'm going to shoot 345 with two fives, just so that it don't hurt people. There for a minute, everybody was coming in on an exit, like getting nasty. And it got overcast in that couple of minutes that I did that. Anyway, I decided that my 30 caliber was shooting like down 345. And I'm still hearing from people that like, oh, geez, that's hurting, man. Oh, I just got lit up by you. Look at all the welts I got. And I'm thinking, it's it's a .30 BB. It's not a 
not really that bad. Um, I'm, I'm shooting 345 and everybody's complaining about it still. Of course, you know, you get various people say, oh, they're just being pussies and all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, if I'm hearing people at 11 rounds per second with a .30 BB that they're complaining, I'm not there to hurt people. So I chronoed it at my house and set it for 320, 325. Then I decided 330 was better because it just acted a little bit nicer at 330. And the pressure, I could get it down to the pressure and I thought, oh, well, I'll do it. And I went to 330 and then I decided 335 because the pressure was just not right. And I'm at 50 PSI and it's shooting 330. With th and, and that's with two fives. Now, I put three O's in it to run it. And it, at one time I even threw some three twos in just to see how it would work. But it's one of those things that I'm still getting people saying, oh, Jesus, boy, did that hurt. I'm like, I, I have friends using AEGs with .30s in them. My Thompson, I use .30s. Okay, um, I brought my Sten out, which is shooting like 300 with two fives. 320, something like that. Three, I, I, that shoots like 330 with two fives. I brought my Sten out, that shoots like 300 with three O's in it. They're complaining about them. And, and you know, nothing's ever said. But I got a, a machine gun, light machine gun, and it's shooting 11 rounds a second at 335. Everybody's like losing their minds. My last game I was at, I went to a site, and he, Kronos, he said the limit is 370 for 1.7 joules with uh, three O's, which is basically 345 with three O's. And I'm like, mm, that's, you know, that's higher than what I got. So I was happy with three, 335. Well, last game that I was at, I had a lot of people still saying, you know, wow, that thing is like, I heard that shooting, and I, I changed out the front end a little bit, makes a little bit more of a pop and they're still bitching. So I said, all right, I cranked my pressure down as low as I want to do it without it acting up, 325. I got 325 out of the gun with two fives. And they're, they're chrono with two fives. They're not actually chrono and jewels. They're chrono and two fives, which is kind of dumb. But I said, okay. And I chrono with uh, 325 with two fives. And that seems to be the magic spot. I don't hear no complaints. People are saying, oh boy, that was scary when I heard the BBs hit. And I'm like, the guy next to me has got a Crytac shooting 20, like 25 rounds a second. He's got a Crytac next to me shooting like 25 rounds a second with .32s. Yet they're saying, my gun is scary shooting at him. So I'm like, okay, that's good. But that, I always wanted to go with a bunch of other polar stars. I'm just, I sort of rambled on here, but I'm talking about rate of fire. And to me, 11 rounds per second was doing the job. Someone gets a gun and new guns that are coming out are shooting 20, 22, 24. I saw that one gun that they released is 27 rounds, 27 point something rounds per second. And I'm like, okay. Oh, and the guy says, that's for trigger response. Yeah, but you're shooting full auto. You're out of game, and you're saying, oh, it's for trigger spot response. Yet he's shooting full auto at me. And I said, what's your rounds per second set? 35. I'm like, you say that it's for trigger response, but you're still shooting full auto on it. So, I don't know. That's just my opinion and my little rant and rave and story here. So I like shooting lower, shooting less rounds per second, and having a good time. I don't want to hurt people. 
people always know that I call my hits. They always know that I'm not bringing a weapon that's going to hurt them. And at one game, I did say to the guy, let's crank it up and see what we can get out of it. And I left it at 325, but I cranked it up to 35 rounds per second. And he's like, wow, that's scary. And yeah, it is. I can do it up to that high of a rate of fire, but do I want to? No. It's all about having fun. Safety first, fun always. All right, you guys have a good day. I still got a long drive ahead of me here, but you try and enjoy the sunshine out there now. Wow.